how to draw a component diagram. In the previous videos, we have discussed what is a component diagram and what are its respective purposes and what is a component. So now in this very video, we are going to discuss that how to draw a component diagram, what are the different notations are there, diagrams are there which will be used in our component diagram and how this component diagram can help us for the understanding of the software performance and also help us in the maintenance of the software. So here we are having how to draw the component diagram. Component diagrams are used to describe the physical artifacts of a system. This artifact includes the files, executables, libraries and etc. So these are the different components which will build up the system. The purpose of this diagram is different. Component diagrams are used during the implementation phase of the application but it is to be prepared well in advance to visualize the implementation details. So during the implementation of the system, this particular component diagram will be utilized. But it has to be prepared well in advance so that we should know that what are the components and how they will be interacting with each other when the system is going to get implemented. Initially, the system is designed using different UML diagrams and then when the artifacts are ready, then component diagrams are used to get an idea of the implementation. Say at first we are going for say object diagrams, prior to that we are going for the class diagrams. So after getting all these classes, then now we are deciding that this is a package which will be containing these set of classes, this is another package which will be containing these set of classes. So now these two packages will, be, be, will become two components in our component diagram. So at first we should go through the first few diagrams of this uh, application development process and when all these artifacts will become ready, then this component diagram will be used to get an idea of the implementation involving all these artifacts. This diagram is very important as without it, the application cannot be implemented efficiently. A well prepared component diagram is also important uh, for other aspects such as application performance and also maintenance. So whenever some change request will be coming from the client, due to the change in some business policy, due to the growth of the company, so new models are to be included and incorporated with the previously existing software. In those cases, for the proper maintenance of the respective software, for the upgradations and to enhance the performance of the software, this component diagram will be referred again and again in future days also. Before drawing a component diagram, the following artifacts are to be identified clearly files used in the system. What are the files we are going to use? Libraries and other artifacts relevant to the application. What are the different libraries and other artifacts which will be used in our application development? Relationships among those artifacts. So in this way, at first all these artifacts are to be ready in front of us. After identifying the artifacts, the following points need to be kept in mind. Use a meaningful name to identify the component for which the diagram is to be drawn. Each and every time we are, we are actually concentrating on the nomenclature policy. So from the component name, we should get the crystal clear idea what is the purpose of the component. So that in the coming days, when the change requests will be coming, when, whenever there will be some performance issue will be raising, in those cases, the software can be properly monitored, the performance measures, the maintenance of the softwares, the upgradation of the softwares can be done very easily. So the component naming, the comment component nomenclature should be done with some industry standard. So prepare a mental layout before producing uh, using the tools. Use notes for clarifying important points. We know that obviously we are not going to uh, draw such component diagrams manually using paper and pencil, we will be using some softwares, we will be using some tools. So many different UML drawing softwares are available in the market. You can easily search on the net, you can find so many softwares are there and some of the softwares are ruling in the market. So those softwares use them and then draw the component diagrams and please, please, please attach the respective notes with some components or with the most of the components for the better understanding where some documents are to be related. Are 
document is to be related with certain components for the better understanding and for the better communication with the next level of development of the application. So components can include both the source code libraries, runtime files, as example in C++ header and the library files are the components. So header files will be containing the function prototypes, the skeleton of the function, the signature of the function. They are not containing the function bodies. The libraries are containing the function bodies. bodies. So these respective header files, these respective library files, both of them are the components in the component diagram. Also the .exe file obtained after compilation can be one of the components. There are two types of components on the diagram. One is the executable components that is the .exe programs and other was the code libraries. So these are the different notations. These are notational conventions are there. From software to software it may vary to some extent but there is a generic component. This is the sub program specifications will be written only the signatures will be there and there is a sub program body will be there, the respective codes will be written there, it might be also in the compiled form and there is the main program that is a root from where they are going to be accessed. So component, a component icon is used to represent a software module with a well defined interface. The type of component may be ActiveX, we can also have the applet, application, DLLs and executables etc. So it can be the variations of this component. But having this sub program specification and sub program body. So these icons are used to represent a sub program's visible specification and the implementation body. So visible means what are the respective signatures are there because library files will be containing the sub program body will be, con will be written in some binary language. So from there we cannot get the idea that things will remain invisible for the uh, normal view but this particular things will be visible that means specifications where we can open it we can read what are the detailing are there in the respective file. A sub program is typically a collection of subroutines a sub program do not contain class definitions. So here the, in case of sub programs we do not have the class definitions there. Class definitions will be there in the respective classes and the, this class names will be there in the respective package. Okay. Main program. A main program is a file that contains the root of a program. So here you see there is a package specification, there is a package body. Specification means here the class names will be written some with some uh, specific detailing and here is a package body where the detailing class, detailed class codes will be written. There is a DLL will be coming to this DLL in the next slide, tax specification and also the tax body. So at first we are going for this package specification and the body. The package is the implementation of a class. A package specification is a header file which contains function prototype information for the class. Only the skeleton of the class will be written. There are additional component icons that are used for runtime components and this runtime components include executable files, DLL files and the tasks. So these are the runtime components that means they are .exe programs or ready-madely compiled and ready-madely they can be integrated in the main application for the smooth running of the application. DLL files, so this icon is used for to represent dynamic link libraries also it can be called as dynamic linking libraries. So this is the DLL, we know that what is the DLL files, so these are the files which will be containing the library function bodies. So whenever the library function will be referred from the program, from the program body during execution, then this DLL will get loaded onto the primary memory in the computer's primary memory that is a RAM and from there the respective library function which has been accessed and called, the respective body will be accessed from the DLL and then it will get executed. So this is known as the DLL, this is a basic purpose of DLL, so that is why it is called dynamic link library or dynamic linking library that means during the runtime of the program or the respective function will be called whose body is written in one of the DLL files then that very DLL file from the secondary storage it will be loaded onto the primary memory and which will supply and that particular file will supply the body of the function which has been called right now. So now we are having the task specification and the task body 
These icons are used to represent package that have independent threads of control an executable file is commonly represented as a task specification with a.exe or with, with .exe rather I think it will be better for understand with a .exe extension. So, this is these are nothing but the executable files from the very extension .exe it can be understood very easily. So, these are the respective icons which will be used in our component diagram. Please watch the next videos where we will be discussing more on this component diagram. Thanks for watching this video.